Mm-hmm. Stuart Steel and Lentil Peas is something I've been meaning to do for quite some time now. Now, the reason why I haven't done it before is because oxtail, if you know, is one is Mr. Oxtail. And it's sometimes the hardest thing to find if you're looking to get it fresh in the market. I usually I go by Kareem and get my beef, uh, but getting oxtail from Kareem is a very elusive thing. I had to go early, and even if you go early, you're not guaranteed to get because people just order from before, um, so those people get preference and that kind of thing. So yeah, getting fresh oxtail is not the easiest thing. So what I did do is purchase it frozen. So I have some frozen oxtail that are defrosting thing here. Um, I'm not going to be using a pressure cooker. If you want to use a pressure cooker and do this recipe, fine. I'm going to do it the low and slow way. You're going to take our time and do this thing proper. Now, as you can see, I have, you know, some key ingredients here. And well, I mean, you have the oxtail, of course. You have the lentil peas, of course. But the little special ingredients, the things that just make my stew oxtail taste real good is, of course, bay leaf. Must have bay leaf. Ruku, must put some ruku up inside there. And then I have a little spice blend of pimento seeds, clove, and nutmeg, and cinnamon. So oxtail is one of those, I guess what you would have called back in the day, a throwaway part. Um, it's the pieces of the meat, similar to like pig foot, pig tail, cow heel, that enslaved Africans would have used um, as the scraps to prepare their meals. You know, the plantation owners wasn't really messing with oxtail and cow heel and them kind of thing. So we used to take these scraps and of course make some best meals because I mean, if you taste oxtail, you would know that it is an amazing thing. And I guess it catched on, you know, people got clued into how best oxtail was. And now oxtail is Mr. Oxtail. Oxtail real expensive. It makes Chef Barry print a hat saying, make oxtail cheap again. And that's something I can get behind because oxtail real expensive. So let's chopping up some celery stalks here. And using some pimento peppers. As you know, pimento peppers don't have any heat. So these are just for seasoning, flavor. Here I have a teaspoon of the allspice or pimento seeds slash juniper berries. Just gonna crush them with the knife. To get the stew going, you wanna get the pot nice and hot. And I'm not adding any oil to the pot because as you know, oxtail is a fatty thing, so it'll have enough fat there to render out and do its thing. So I'm not adding any additional oil to the pot. Let's go in with the brown sugar, just like that. And it will begin to caramelize. You want to use a wooden spoon for this or a rubber spatula if you have, because if you use a metal spoon, the caramelized sugar will stick to the spoon. So a wooden spoon is the preferred utensil for doing stews. As you can see, it's already starting to bubble up. Now we want to stir it around. It's starting to get frothy. You want to make sure to keep your eye on the pot. Stay present. Don't go away and try to do anything else while you're doing this. So now it's at the point where it's nice and frothy. And as soon as it goes dark brown, that's when we want to add the meat. Nice. So at this point, in with the oxtail. I'm going to toss it around and make sure all the pieces get a nice coating. Thank you. 
And at this point, which is the searing process before we start the braising, it's important to add a powdered seasoning because this is where we lock in flavor into the meat. The flavor will penetrate the meat at this point. So we're going in with some salt, some black pepper, allspice, add in a couple grains of whole clove, and I add in some grated nutmeg. And there's my little stew spice. I'm actually going to be working on a spice blend in the near future, so look out for that. And this little spice blend that I like to add to stews does give it real amazing flavor. Now you wanna add the aromatics, onion, celery stalks, pimento, and garlic. And we're gonna to toss this, mix it up well. So at this point, we're gonna cover it down, not adding any additional liquid. What is going to happen is it's going to steam, liquid is going to form, the liquid is going to infuse back into the meat and that's going to give it even more flavor. So you're going to let this go for about five to eight minutes and then we'll add, you know, the other ingredients, the bay leaf, the cinnamon and that kind of thing and the roku and the water and then let it braise. You want to let this braise for about three hours, low and slow, you know the thing. You see what we're looking like here? Mm-hmm. As you can see, it's spring its own liquid, looking real nice. So what we're gonna do now is add the rest of the ingredients for the braising to start. Two bay leaves in, add in a piece of cinnamon in there as well. Add a bit of ruku, of course. And now I add in four cups of water And we may need to add some more water as the time goes on. We'll monitor this. So like an hour in, you're gonna check the water level and if it needs more water, we're just gonna top it back up. But for now, we're starting with four cups of water. Of course, Scotch bonnet pepper must go in. So we're covering this down and we're gonna let this go for two hours. And then at the two hour mark, you're gonna check it see how close to done it is and then we're going to add the lentil peas okay so because the oxtail is going to take a much longer time to cook than the lentil peas we're not adding it in as yet so what i'm going to do is just add it to a bowl add some water so i'm doing the math in my head and given that i think the oxtail will take about three hours to cook lentil peas takes about half an hour to cook then you need to add in the lentil peas at the two and a half hour mark now I will be checking the oxtail to see how done it is, how tender it is, and depending on how tender it is at the two and a half hour mark, then I would know if to add in the lentil peas or not, or if to give it more time. So, you know, I'll check on it and I'll let you know as the time goes by. Okay, so we have the two and a half hour mark. So, it's sure we look in here. I mean, it dried on, but not to the point where it's burning or anything. Um, I'm just going to check to see how tender this is. Yeah, we're almost there. Almost there. Kind of falling off the bone. But I would like it to be even more tender than this. I don't want any resistance when I cut into it. So I think we could go for another 45 minutes or so. So now is good time to add in the peas. Now let me just remove this hot pepper, the scotch bonnet pepper before it bursts in the pot. Also removing the cinnamon stick. Gonna add our lentil peas. And I didn't have to add any additional water to the pot. So we was good with the four cups of water. Well, up until this point, which is the two and a half hour mark. So, for the remaining amount of time, 
gonna go in with about two cups of water. We don't want too much liquid. See at this point, gonna cover it. Let it come to a boil and then reduce the heat to low and let it simmer away for 45 minutes. All right, so it took 40 minutes, not 45 minutes. So 40 minutes later, and this is how we look in. Peas cooked, nice and tender. Our oxtail falling off the bone. As you could see, the meat just falling off the bone. So we're looking real good. Now I find it slightly dry. So I'm just gonna add this a little bit of water. Not too much. So a little bit, just to give it a little sauce. And we almost there, almost there. We just have one more final thing to do. All right, so the final touches in this epic dish is a sprinkle of fresh celery. Just gonna toss this up and we are ready to go. Ready to plate up and dig in. This is gonna spend the last three to four hours making this. Can't wait to dig in and try it. Peas perfectly cooked, tender, and our ox still cooked, tender. The meat just falling off the bone, as you can see here. No resistance at all. So, yeah, can't wait to dig in and try this. Right now, I'm so hungry, I can't even wait to do like the final shot and then take pictures and then come back and do the close off. I just went and go for a little small portion here. Just add in a little bit of peas. And then let's get a piece of ox tail here. And this one all the meat fall off the bone, but you still get the idea. Yeah, yeah. Tender. Mm. It's going for a taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. This, real nice. Mm-hmm. The clove, the cinnamon, the allspice, the nutmeg. That will just give the stew a real deep, nice flavor. And of course, the flavor itself from the oxtail, because as you know, the closer to the bone is the sweeter the meat. So, you know the kind of flavor that oxtail is just impart in a dish. So all the peas and everything that soak up with that wonderful flavor. And yes, you could do this with the pressure cooker, but I think the way that the fat does render and the meat does cook low and slow, much better than the pressure cooker. Of course, if you're strapped for time and you really want to make this, by all means, do the pressure cooker method. But this way, definitely way more flavor. Way more flavor. Mm-hmm proper. If you like this recipe, please give the video a thumbs up and give it a share. And if you do try it, tag us in your photos, post it to social media. We'd love to see it. Of course, a link to the full recipe will be posted in the video description and you can check that out on eataFoodTT.com. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This thing tastes real good. I go and dig in. See you all later. Yeah, no. I'm still eating, you know. Like any plate clean, nah boy, it's in real best. Mm hmm.